as the crow flies straight through the woods. All right. We'll make sure this gets on. Sorry, uh, just so you guys know, give Marv, Marv a little break tonight. He hasn't been up there in like six months, so crash course, hit the button, go. Can you hear me? Let's make sure online, Ken, right? You've, I'm pretty loud. Nobody's ever accused me of being too quiet, that's for sure. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> so as you guys all know, when I start studying God's Word to uh, come to you guys to give you the message, I speak to myself as well. And part of this sermon that I wrote this week is one that I myself has been going through some battles. You know, this day and age at work. Uh, it's, been a, it's been a different interesting times at work i'm just going to put it that way and just to watch to see what happens that didn't go on back in the day at least i didn't believe it went on because sorry i'm only 41 years old so i can't really say too much back in the day but uh sometimes though fleshly desires get a hold of us very quickly today we're going to be in galatians chapter 5 verse 16 through 26 and i've titled this a this sermon, the fruits of the fruits of the spirit. But here's the thing about scripture: for us to get to the fruits, make sure I'm on with this. Is the lapel on, Mark. All right. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Turn it up a little bit. I gotta be held down on good. You good? Lapel's not on up there. I guess we're not going lapel, but that's all right. I have to stay at the pole, but I guess you guys tied me down. That's okay. But the other day, a storm hit, right? We had this big storm, and I had to go home and help with the chickens to see what was going on. And when I got to the coop, the light was out. Normal, not untypical, right? Uh, I wired out to the chicken coop, but I put one of those ground fault breakers in. Sorry, Mike, you'll know more electricity than I will. But it tripped, the goal of it. I re-tripped it, and it kept going out. I re-tripped it, kept going out. Re-tripped it, kept going out. My son's in there trying to get the eggs, and it's pitch black in there. He's, uh, he's not happy because he doesn't want to reach under a chicken that he can't see. We do have one chicken in there. She's a, a lovely chicken. She'll definitely attack you if you try to get her eggs. Well, he didn't want to stick his hand in there. Well, that being said, what happened to me? I got frustrated, right? I got mad. In the aspect of, you know... The outburst of wrath. So I admit to that. And I felt bad for my son because here's my son. He's trying to help me. But yet here I am trying to be calm. <laughs> and it's like, this thing ain't working. We've been here messing with it a half hour. Am I the only one that gets this way? Ah, uh, probably not. But that being said, uh, it's very easy for us to get down ourselves about this. And tonight's sermon is not about getting down on yourself. Yes, we're going to start that way. But ultimately, like I tell the, my kids, it's an opportunity, right, to give us improvements. We all got to improve. Even as we get more wiser, you still have areas of improvement, right? I, I, I wish life got easier, I want to say, as we got older. It doesn't. The things that used to work... Or you want to do, you can't do, because the body says you can't do it. But your mind says you can. Right? But when we struggle or wrestle with life, one of the main issues that we're dealing with are these fleshly, much they to admit to us, material things. But what does Satan want to do? Right? He wants you to worry about them. You know? But uh, when we think that we're worrying when we're battling these worldly lusts, we feel like we're into this wall, like we can't get through the wall, right? But who really has put up that wall? Satan, or us. It's been our own personal... Per In myself, lately, I feel like I've got a wall. I'm difficult trying to break through. But let's look at David, right? David is one I've been studying in devotions... I just got out of David. Now I'm heading into, uh, oh man, trip my mind. Yes, I'm heading into the Kings, right? I just get, but look at David. 
How many times did David had the chance to take care of Saul? Right? At least three times. One to the point where David was in the cave with Saul, cut off the robe, and he couldn't do it. But yet, what happened when David got around Bathsheba? Right? And David is a man after God's own heart. David is part of the part of uh, the Christ line. So, and even reading David, and I never realized this, that Uriah was part of David's core. Right? It wasn't like Uriah was just some unknown, benown soldier that David knew. No, Uriah was one part of, I believe it's David's 30 fighting men. Right? And what did David do? He sent him to the front line and told everybody to back away. So that's how easy, right? And it, that went on. Another thing I didn't know, you know, studied just a little free tidbits. That went on for a year. David had to think about that for a year before Nathan came to David. Right? Then once Nathan put it into the term of goat, as goats, I believe, it clicked right in David's head. Well, that's wrong. What's there's two? So that's why... I, I'm saying is we all ha- we all try to put this wall up in front of us, but even our own mentors like David, we're going to make mistakes. We're going to mess up. But the nice thing is we're going to look at we got to make ourselves right first before we get to the fruits of the spirit. Otherwise, God would put the fruits of the spirit first, right? If we read Galatians, we're going to go to Galatians. Chapter 5, verse 16. We're going to read through verse 25. 26, sorry, I thought I missed one. All right. I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the lust, for the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so they do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now, the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousy, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelers, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, Jess, I have also told you in time past that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But, right, here's our transition word. We'll get into more. But the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceived, provoking one another, envying one another. Right? So first we're going to look at verse 16 and 17. I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Huh. Simple. We just got to walk in the Spirit. Whew. I'm done. Sermon's over. No. Right? If it was just that simple... We would not be here tonight. But just think about that. And I guess working in medical terms, sometimes you you dig more into terms. But it says you shall not. Right? The term shall. You shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh if you walk in the spirit. It's not may. It's not should. You shall not. But what do we have to do? We have to walk in the spirit. Now, here comes the fleshly desires, right? Adam and Eve, they were created by God. Well, they sinned. Hope that's nothing new to you. But, uh, right, when Adam and Eve sinned, we all were born to sin, right? We're all going to sin. I can't take that away. But God gives us a choice in life and what decisions we want to make. But when you give in to the fleshly desires, what are you going against? The Spirit, right? All believers have the Holy Spirit in them. 
Once you're saved, what do they say that you get? Right? We all get the Holy Spirit within us. But we need to submit to the Spirit's controls as well as walk in our daily life, which means we have to grow in the Lord. That's work that we have to put in. How do we grow in the Lord? Read your Bible. Uh, pray. Just like this morning I was talking to Sunday school class. you got to have that communication. If you go to Mexico, can you communicate with God down there just as well as you can here? Yes. If you go to go across seas, right? No, I know they're getting ready to take a trip to Israel, planning a trip to Israel. Right? It's just a conversation with God. But you gotta you have to have that conversation with God. Be able to help you get through through the flesh. This also includes the mind. Like I've said before, if you put everything up that I'm thinking on my mind up on that wall, we're in trouble tonight. I'm going to tell you guys that right now. I'll probably be exiled from the church, moving to somewhere else, right? We have to control our mind well. Well, who wants to control your mind? Satan wants to get a hold of your mind, right? That's difficult. I always thought when I was 16, young and dumb, oh, it'd be so much easier to control the mind when I get older. I'm all giving in to this. I can tell you I was young and dumb (laughs) because it ain't any easier. That's for sure. It seems like it gets harder. right? It seems like it gets harder and harder as we get older to battle these things. But there was one day I was on my way to work. This was years ago. And I was just battling with sin. It's difficult for me to talk about this because I don't know how I let it in my life. And I was talking to my wife about it. But finally on my way to work, I just started screaming to the Lord. God, I want out of this sin. God, this is bearing me down. What does God say in Romans chapter 1? If you want to live in sin, what is he going to allow you to do? Live in sin. I wanted out of it so bad. I could tell you, right after that, you know, I just prayed, just started. And I'm not going to say go pray to the Lord at the top of your voice. But God doesn't care, I'll tell you that much. But just the peace of God after that, that sin, exited my life. But we got to be willing to want to turn that in. Then when we have fleshly devi- desires, we have the flesh versus the spirit, right? Do they mix? Are they like, how do we want to put this? Uh, they're like oil and water, right? When you add oil to water, what happens? Can you mix them? Not unless, of course, you throw some brownie batter in there or some other things to try to, to coerce it. But no, they don't mix. Right? The same thing with the fleshly and the spirit. They're not going to congeal together. Then we get to the end here that you do not get to do the things that you wish. How many times do we want to do what we want that gets us in trouble? Or am I the only one? Right? There are times where I want to do this. Like one time I wanted to go up north so bad camping. I want to take the dune buggy up there and just have a week off. All the campgrounds are booked up. Nothing could get. I kept calling and calling. Finally, we had one site available. I got the site. Here I go. Two days in, I flipped my dune buggy, broke my arm, had to come back home. Now, right, that's what I wanted was to go up there. I don't think the Lord wanted me up there. Probably when I was going upside down, sticking my arm up. <laughs> now, that being said, I did have a five-point racing artist on, so I have no clue why I stuck my arm up. I should have kept them in, but that's another side of the story. But let's look at what Paul also talks about. Man, there's so much good stuff in studying this. In Romans chapter 8, we're going to turn, turn to Romans chapter 8 really quick. We're going to be at verse 5. For those who live according to the flesh sets their mind on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is, is enemy against, the God, against God, 
For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Right? When you're in the flesh, are you pleasing God? No. Then we're going to turn to Romans chapter 7. Paul also talks about it here. Verse 18 and 20 of my Bible is just on the other page. And this is one of those sections that you say, what was Paul talking about? But I, I understand. This is one of the few that I understood. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. For to will, for to will is present with me. But how to perform what is good, I do not find. For the good that I will to do, I do not do. But the evil I will not to do, that I practice. It is no longer I who do, does it, but the sin that dwells in me. Now, yes, as you read that through the first time, Romans is like, what? It, what is going on here? But the things that I don't want to do, it seems that's what I do the best at, right? But the things that I should do, I struggle with. That's, that's a big battle within me, right? That's the one thing that I do. So that's going to be one of my challenges tonight is we have to work on getting rid of our fleshly desires, Now we're going to go to verse, go back to Galatians chapter 5. I got cheaters, so you just stick it in there and go. <laughs> um, now that the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, Envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now tonight, I'm not going to sit here and go through most of these, as you guys know a lot of them, right? I mean, uh, adultery, fornication, uh, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, and sorcery, those are all pretty simple. Right? Those are pretty simple to spell out. You know, sorcery is one that witchcraft. Some people are still practicing rich witchcraft. I've had to counsel people in that. But uh, hatred. Right? This term hatred. It's a hard term for me to use. I don't like using the term hate. But how many people are using the term hate? Right? Hate crimes. For us to call, they're trying to pass for us to call somebody homosexual. They're going to call that a hate crime, right? And do we hate them? Honestly, do we hate them? No. The love of God is for everybody, right? But they want to call that a hate crime. That term hatred is one, especially, you know, you go through the schools. I hate this. I hate that, right? Do you really? So that's one that's um, contentions. We live in a very contentious society. Is it okay to protest? Yes, it is totally okay to protest. But should we be contentious when we do it? No. And that's where I'm, I'm shocked at seeing, like, is there a term peaceful protest anymore? Right? People get so angry lately. Right? Uh, jealousy. Right? This is one that's hard your neighbor gets something new you want it or somebody has the latest and greatest are your neighbors doing fairly well you want to be like them right you know i admit sometimes mr sumi bringing these perfect looking tomatoes you know and here i am growing the same tomato plants using the same stuff and mine got all these little bubbles on them or they got the blossom end rot or praise the lord for mr sumi right he helped me through all that but there was times to where I looked at his, like, what am I doing different? And here, like I said, remember what I said when we start? I preached to myself. When I got one pointing out, I've got three pointing right back at me. How many times do we try to battle ourselves things and get into more trouble? Right? We try to take on these battles ourselves. 
Like at work, I'm, I'm going to hands down admit, I've got a project that's struggling, and I try to battle it myself, right? Instead of look to the Lord in prayer. I'll do it myself, and at the end of the day, I go home, I feel deflated. Nice thing is I work a half hour away, so I get that time in my car to talk to the Lord. <laughs> you know, but I need to get better at, at the time to turn to the Lord. Then what about anger, right? Outbursts of wrath, jealousy, yes. Outbursts of wrath, the anger, right? Did Jesus get angry? Yes. So it's not a sin to get angry. It's how we react in it, right? Selfish ambitions, whew, man, this is a difficult one, right? People are being more and more selfish nowadays, where you try to put yourself in front of everybody else. One thing as a board that we do at the beginning of every board meeting is we pray for unity on the board, right? How easy it is, can we each take our own opinions into the meeting instead of God's will and what God wants for the church, right? So we each pray at the beginning of our board meeting, or we, we don't each pray, we pray for unity, that God will grant us unity as a board as we make decisions. Now, all board meetings are easy, right? We wish they were all... the just come in for two hours and walk out the door. There's some difficult decisions that's got to be made. Then what about heresies? This is one I'm struggling with. I'm struggling with this. I'm sorry. I'm struggling with the New Age Church. Right? Where they say sin is okay. Right? Where they say it's okay to sin. I struggle heavily with that. You know, it, it feels like uh, they're taking God's grace to the extremes, right? That's one that I've, I've sat down because I don't want to sit and bash churches. That's not, I, it's not our responsibility to say who's saved or not saved. But I can tell you one thing. A sin is a sin, and it is wrong to sin no matter what sin you're in, right? It's not okay to sin. You just can't go do and expect God to forgive. What does God expect us to do? Repent from our sins and turn. Right? You have to turn from that sin. Just like the day I was in my car screaming, I had to, you have to be willing to turn from it. And then the rest of these murders, drunkenness, rivalries, and the like. Right? We're also, this was also repeated in Ephesians 5.5. 5. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of God. This is serious business. This is serious business. It's not that we hate anybody. right? We know that a sin is against God and it's not going to get you into heaven. That's what we're here for is to get people into heaven, to be a witness to people. But I just don't want to stand here and keep talking about the negative. right? We all have a lot of negative. I'm not a huge negative guy. I don't want to be, uh, like I said, the sermon. The sermon is not the battle of the flesh. Because if it was the battle of the flesh, I'd be done right now. And we'd all walk out of here like, well, that was great. But another thing I've struggled the most with is look at the news. How can they get away with blatantly face lying to you? And they don't even care anymore. What do they tell you? Well, they do it so you'll watch it. That's wrong. Right? We teach our kids to tell us the truth. That's what we're supposed to be telling them to. But yet it's okay for them to lie. But, that, but like I said, as we end this negative, if you want to live in that lifestyle, God's going to allow you to live in that lifestyle. He's going to allow you to keep going in it. But let's look at the fruit of the Spirit, right? Let's go to the good stuff. This is what we should be. You know, in, uh, I think it was about seven, six, seven years ago in Awana, we spoke on all the fruit, fruit of the Spirit. And yes, Darl, I know it's not a grape, a cherry, a watermelon, a banana. I know he used to, his grandkids used to sing the song to him in the car. He'd tell me every night, you know, they keep singing this song to me. Well, they all know the fruit of the Spirit, right? Uh, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, 
peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against there is no law. First of all, according to MacArthur, if you really study this section of MacArthur's study Bible, they've got a lot of really good notes on this too. But according to MacArthur, the fruit of the Spirit are godly attributes that characterize the life of those who belong to God by faith in Christ and possess the Spirit of God. The Spirit produces fruit which consists of nine characteristics or attributes that are inextricably or inseparably linked with each other and are commanded of the believers throughout the New Testament. Right? These are commanded for us to do. The first one is love. Paul was so kind to give us a whole chapter on love. Right? 1 Corinthians 13. If you haven't read it, go home and read it. I remember Pastor Turley back in the day gave us a challenge. I want you to read 1 Corinthians 13 two weeks straight, every day for two weeks straight. And let me know about the love of God. But what is our greatest commandment to God? To love the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, and with all your mind. Right? Then what do we need to do? We need to love the neighbors as ourself. Whew. Trying to tell the kids that in Awana. <laughs> right? You mean I got to love my enemies? Yes, you do. You mean the guys that make fun of me? Yes, you do. But love. This is the agape love, right? We have uh, three forms of love. You have the brotherly love, which is Philly, Philadelphia. Agape love, and the third one is running my mind tonight. But this is the agape love. We have to have love. Then we got to have joy in our life. Is every day going to be joyful? No, we always want it to be, but some days you get those news from the doctor, right? I see as you get older, you get to visit the doctor a little more often. They want more blood work. It's the first year they said I'm over 40. I have to get my blood work pre-going to the doctor, not check me out, then get my blood work, right? But there's days they're going to give you the news. But uh, so at work... A lot of people ask me, how am I doing today? And I always respond, alive, alert, awake, enthusiastic. I'm ready to go at work, especially at 3 a.m. I know Mr. Sumi's probably getting ready to go to bed then as I'm getting up going to work, but I'm ready to go. Then the third one is peace. We need to live with peace to keep ourselves calm. How easy is it for us to overreact? Anybody ever seen overreaction? Anybody overreacting? I guarantee if you're a parent, I'm not going to speak for you, but I'm pretty confident you overreacted at some point in time. But we got to have the peace. We're going to turn to Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving let requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. Right? In everything by prayer and supplication, let them be made known to God. And what happens? We have the peace with God. Aren't those amazing words? Man, there's a lot of good stuff. You guys don't have time. There's a few times in the middle of the night. A lot of you guys know I've used to work third shift, so there's nights I don't sleep every throughout all, all nights. Usually the weekends I'm up 2, 3 a.m. What do I typically do when I can't get to sleep? I get up and I go talk to God and I read his word, right? And usually right then the peace of God comes within me and calms me down and gets me back to bed. The fourth one is long-suffering. What is long suffering? Another word is patience. We got to have patience. Whew. Man, sometimes our patience can get get uh, pretty thin, right? <laughs> if you're a bus driver, I'm pretty confident your patience is super thin. Because <laughs> you got kids today, you got to look behind your back. 
I've always given my wife credit. Most of us get to sit down and look at kids, right? When you're a bus driver, you're sitting in the front. Where are the kids? Behind you. All you got is a mirror in front of you that you can look at the kids, but where should your eyes be? On the road, <laughs> right? I give bus drivers credit, and I give my life all credit in the world for that. But according to MacArthur, the patience refers to the ability to endure injuries inflicted by others and the willingness to accept irritating or painful situations, right? We're going to run into people who are going to hurt us. I'm not going to break any news to anybody. Your friends are going to hurt you, right? People are going to hurt you, but we got to have the patience with them. In Colossians 3, verses 12 through 13, Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another, if anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you must do, also must do. We have to forgive. How many times do we have to forgive? Seventy times seven, right? So yes, we're, God is going to teach us patience. We got to have patience, and we got to be willing to forgive. We're going to go through suffering. I'm not going to sit here and tell you life's going to be all peachy and grand when you walk out those doors. Yes, you're in a missions field. But the fifth one's kindness, right? Kindness. How much do you look forward to to a kind word, right? Every day, you know, I, I enjoy coming to church. Even when we were going through COVID on the board, we talked about Hebrews, right? Not forsaking the assembly of one another. I get if you, if you were nervous about what was going on to stay home, that's okay. But when we didn't come together as assembly, what happened? I love online ministry. It's great, but it's not the same as meeting here in person, greeting each and every one, giving a word of kindness. But even kindness, you got to be careful of. right? I call it the McDonald's wife. When you drive into McDonald's and they come in there, good evening or good morning, how may I help you today? Right? And you go there every day and usually they're cheerful, they're, they're, they should be cheerful and excited because you're, you're selling things to you. And then you get caught going there because they're cheerful and excited. Right? As you go home or as you go to work, are you going to experience kindness at all times? I would love to say I'm kind to my wife 100% of the time, but if I do that, I'd be lying, right? I'm not going to stand here and lie. We've had our moments, that's for sure. That's why I called kindness you got to be a little careful of. But we all enjoy a kind word. What about goodness, right? Galatians 6.10 Therefore, as we opportunity, let us do good to all, especially those who are of the household of faith. No matter how much it takes to do good to all, that there are people who are going to be horrible to us. Set us up for failure, but we still need to be good, right? There are people that are going to be horrible to us. No matter how people are going to treat you, we still need to be good to them. I wish people treated us all good. All we're, uh, we're willing to help out. Right? It's crazy you read the news and how many more crazy, crazy people are getting. Even the people that try to do good that get taken advantage of, right? You know, I know, oh man, six months ago, we had a guy walking down a road. Micah was driving. I told Micah, swing over, pick him up. Ah, right? I told people here, you get the old funny look nowadays. I kept my eye on him, but yes, my daughter was in the back. I'm pretty confident she was texting her mom back and forth, left and right. You know how bad your dad is? You know what your dad's doing right now? But we need to be good to others. The seventh is faithfulness. We have to be faithful. Right? We have to be faithful to God. We have to be faithful. We have to be trustworthy. Man, that's one that I hate to admit. It's hard to find trustworthy people right now. Am I, am I the only one struggling with that? No, I'm not saying here, whoa, whoa, I don't want you guys to say I'm not. I'm just saying outside of here. Like I tell the kids, like I tell people at work, 
When you go to Walmart, you go to schools, 90% of those people don't even care about Christ. There's only about 10% Christians, so 9 out of 10. But even if you look at religion, study religions, I don't care if you, you know, Islam's and all that. It's down to 40% of people are religious. You know, they've crossed the 50% plateau in studies. Again, these are all studies done. I don't know where they'd study people at because I've never been asked these questions. Right? The eighth is gentleness. We need to be humble. And we can't revish, re, wish revenge on anybody. Sorry, kids. Can't wish revenge on anybody. What does God say? Revenge is mine, thus saith the Lord. God will take care of the revenge. Yes, those people that hurt us, those people that uh, want us to do bad, want us to fail, there are people out there that fail. If you guys work in the manufacturing society, how many times you work next to somebody that wants your job? They try to make you fail at your job so they can get your job or make you look bad, right? Now, the ninth one, <laughs> self-control. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I am for sure my kids right now are back there thinking, Dad, and self-control. <laughs> but we have to exert self-control, right? We have to restrain ourselves like we talked about before. We have to strain ourselves from overreacting. But you know what the best of the all? A little secret? All nine of those are free. Right? They're all free. We don't even have to pay for any of them. Man, don't you guys like free things? And there is, there is no law against how many times that we could do these. Right? What does it say? Let me get back there. Against such, there is no law. Right? There is no law against the fruit of the Spirit. We can do those as many times. You just don't have to go out there and do joy one time. You don't have to go out there and be kind another day. Right? There is no. You can do it all at once if you want to. But let's finish off strong. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. Think about those words. Right? And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh. That term crucified. Every time we do communion, I just think about Christ. Just the beard plucked out and just the blood, right? But think about that. With Christ, we crucified the flesh. We've got rid of the flesh and its passions and desires. How many times do we let the flesh control us? Right? We've got to battle this. But if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Right? We've got to walk in the Spirit. We've got to get rid of the passions and desires of the flesh. Then let, let us not become conceited. Right? Provoking one another, envying one another. We need to encourage one another. One of my spiritual gifts is... Uh, is exhortation. I love encouraging people, right? There are days where you're going to battle. There are days when you're down or send text out. In our Sunday school class, I have a text group now where, you know, uh, where we text each other to see how each other's doing or check in because we all give a prayer. What would you like us for us to pray for this week? Right? But we don't. We want to go out and encourage one another. And when you see a brother or sister that's in dwelling in sin or the fleshly desires. Do you want to go provoke them? No. Right? You don't want to keep laughing at them or making fun of them. You want to tell them. Right? We have to go up. We are instructed to go up and tell them about the fruit of the Spirit. But in conclusion tonight, uh, no matter where you go, no matter what goes on in life, we're all, I love the sign that Lyle made that he put above the door. We are entering into the mission field. So wherever you go to work, go, go to shopping, something that you're doing at home, spending time with family, 
What are people going to remember us as? The fruit of the Spirit are the fleshly desires. Right? That's my challenge tonight. What do you want to remember it as? Are you remembered as the fruit? Right? We've got to battle through the fleshly desires. Does that mean sin's going to end tomorrow? No, you're still going to battle sin. You have to ask God for forgiveness and turn from it. And that work, I'm going to, do, I'm going to give it all, my, all I've got to make sure that they see the joy, the love, the peace, the patience, the kindness, the goodness, the self-control. It reminds me of a song, Make Me a Servant. Right? Make me a servant, humble and meek. Lord, let me lift up those who are weak. And may the prayer of my heart always be, make me a servant. I know myself I have to work on this. I need to be more Christ-like and let it shine. We need to let others know, right, that we are Christians. That we are Christians. We need to make sure that there is a difference in us and who we are. Let's go in and pray. Father God, thank you so much for tonight. Thank you so much for the wonderful words that you've given us in your book. Just thank you so much for the fruit of the spirits that you've given us. We know that each and every one of us battle. We know that there's the flesh out there that Satan wants to battle us in that. Especially for Christians, Father, that Satan wants to go against, to go against us. But Father, you've given us the fruit of the spirit. Thank you for that, Father. We pray that you let us guide this in the rest of our lives and guide us on our way as we come back next week as well. In your precious, most holy name, amen.